Hey guys, welcome to another Godo tutorial in the Tower Defense series. In this tutorial, we're gonna put a tank on the map and make it drive around. Let's get started. Now, of course, one thing we need is a tank that we can put on the map. So I'm here in my folder, in my assets folder, I got all the packs we've downloaded so far. We're gonna make use of the top-down tanks redux. We're gonna go to the PNG folder, the default size folder. We scroll down a little bit. We got a couple of default tanks in here that we can use. I'm gonna make use of this tank blue. I'll copy that. I'll go back to my project folder. I'll go into the assets folder, enemies folder, and I'll paste the tank in there. Now this tank, if we zoom in a little bit, is pointing down and as we have done previously in this tutorial series we want that pointing right so that it lines up with how godot default orientation works so we're going to right click it we're going to rotate it left and there we go here's our tank now we can go over to the project and we can start working on the path that our tank needs to follow in our project we want to open up our map scene under scenes maps map1.tscn and on this map we want to add a path for all our enemies including the blue tank to follow for that we're going to zoom in here on the start we're going to right click our main node we're going to add a child scene we're going to add a path 2d with the path 2d selected you'll see in the top bar here that you're going to get a couple of extra icons in the toolbar to add and remove uh, path points and to select and to curve them. And the curves are gonna be important for our corners. So we're gonna select here the uh, add path point. We're gonna go outside. Remember our screen size is uh, one tile in the underneath here. You can see those lines. We're gonna start our tanks outside so we don't actually see them spawn in and just they come rolling into the scene as it were. And we're going to be selecting points on the road that we need to connect. Now for these corner tiles, I'm gonna be selecting there where the tiles border with the straight section, basically. This is to make sure that I can set the curves easily from one corner to the other and they all look good. With my points, I'm following this handy light gray line that's on the middle of the road. So we're just gonna lay down the path on the middle of this road section all the way through this level. So we're gonna have a point here. Now we also wanna have a corner here because of course we wanna curve around. In a future tutorial, we'll add the uh, option of two different paths that the tank can choose from and we'll add some randomness to that as well. That's not gonna be part for this tutorial because that would make this tutorial way too long. But for now, we're just gonna go with one predetermined path. Just like that. We'll finish this path up and I'm doing it a little bit quickly. If you wanna make sure everything is pixel perfect, you might wanna take just a little bit more time to make sure that these are uh, perfectly on point. Now I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with one corner to curve this, and then I'll apply this to all the corners in exactly the same manner. I'm not gonna show that in this tutorial because, well, this is gonna be a little bit boring. So for the curves, we're gonna select the second button here for the specific path to the options. That is the curve. When you select one of these points, we're gonna drag that point out and you'll see we'll get a curve vector. So I'm gonna pull this out and I'm making sure that, if I just put it here, if you see this point right here, this curve indicator, if this is not exactly in line with the blue line, you'll see that now it doesn't only curve the corner on this side, it also curves the corner on this side, or curves the path, I should say. So we wanna make sure that we pull these curves out straight. We can select these curves and then adjust them. And I'll just add or make sure that that curve is exactly on top of the blue line. So I'm pulling this out exactly, in this case, horizontal, and I'll pull this one out vertical. You don't have to pull it out all the way that this curve already follows the path because we can simply add these two together to make sure that that looks nice. So it's good if, oh, I've got to move it the other way around. It's nice if you uh, make sure you do, or you get them a little bit of both sides of the of the corner. And there we go, here we got the curve. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna, well, let's do one more together. Gotta make sure we do that on the correct side. So we'll do it here and we'll pull one out here, and there we go. Now we got a nice curve that the tanks can follow. I'll do this for every single corner that is in the map, and then I'll be back to you and we'll follow up with actually adding the tank to the world. 
All right, I've got all my curves for the path in here. You can see my curve path going all the way through the map. Now I'm gonna rename this from path to D into just simply path as that'll be good enough for us. Next, we can start adding the tank to the world and for that, we're gonna need a scene for the tank. So we're gonna create a new scene. We're gonna create a new 2D scene and this no 2D, we're gonna change this type into a path follow. The reason being is that the path follow node will automatically follow a path and forwards its position and its rotation to all its children nodes. So we can make this tank follow the path without adding any code for turning the tank or whatever. We just have a couple lines of code for the path follow to follow the path with a certain speed and then we're done. So we have changed this into a path follow and let's rename this and we'll just call this blue tank as that's what the scene should be called. Then we're gonna add, oh, I'm used to just adding a kinematic body. The kinematic body will allow us to do collision detection with the projectiles that we'll add in the future. Uh, the kinematic body, of course, is going to need a sprite to represent what it is. And while I do that, I'm gonna zoom here in to the zero, zero. Then under the assets, enemies we have added that tank blue we'll add that tank blue here to the center of the screen and we want to keep that in the center because this tank is uh, zero zero point is going to follow the path and as our path is exactly in the middle of the road the tank will drive in the middle as well then the kinematic body will need a collision shape otherwise it's not completed the collision shape will be a rectangle there we go and we'll drag this rectangle out to cover the tank as uh, as good as we can there we go that is good enough for now we'll save this tank under scenes and we don't have an enemy folder yet so we'll create a folder for enemies where we'll save it as blue tank that's good now that we have the tank, we can add a little bit of logic to this tank scene to make sure that it's going to be functional as we add it to the world. We can do that by adding a script to our blue tank. I'm going to add script, blue tank.gd, sounds fine to me. And I'll add in the code that I got for my pre-built project. Here we see we got a speed variable, so we can give different enemies that we create different speeds, creating a extra strategic layer for the player to be challenged. We have in our function physics process, which is automatically called 60 times per second, a call to move, which we forward the delta value. And in our function move, we set the offset of the path follow to D along the path by getting the current offset and then adding the speed multiplied by delta. Delta being the time that has lapsed since the last time that this function ran. So that way we get a smooth movement along the path and our tank is going to follow automatically, both in its position and in its rotation. Now, before I can actually demonstrate to you how this tank is going to move, we will have to spawn the tank into the world. And we're gonna prepare the code to also include various wave data, how different tanks are gonna be spawning in a single wave. So we're gonna prepare the code a little bit also for future tutorials. Now, before we move to that, you might be saying, hey, Stefan, I got this, uh, uh, this yellow warning sign right here. Well, that's correct because the path follow to D only works if it's a child of path. But as we're gonna be spawning these tanks in, we're gonna be spawning this path follow to D underneath the path that is currently on the map. So this error will be gone the moment that this is gonna be running at runtime when the game is actually uh, being played by a player. So don't worry about that yellow symbol right there. That's absolutely intended. The code for spawning in these tanks, we don't wanna put that on the map level because the spawning mechanics are gonna be the same for every single map. So instead, we're gonna put that one level higher in our hierarchy on the game scene. We're gonna to switch to our script and we're gonna click into our game scene.gd and it should still be there for you. If you can't find it, make sure you go to scenes, main scenes, and simply double click on gamescene.gd to open this script. This is where we've put all of our tower building functions, and we're gonna be adding more and more code to this script. It's gonna be quite a big script of probably a couple hundred lines, possibly even. And because of that, we probably wanna section this off a little bit. We can do that by adding some comments to it. I'm gonna close all our building functions because we don't need those, so we don't need those in, 
available or open all the time. And I'm simply going to be adding three lines of comments and I'll say these are the building functions. If I can still type English, of course, that is. We don't need that enter. And what we'll do also, or what we'll do now, I should say, we're now going to add various wave functions. We're going to be adding three wave functions to be precise. And let me go over these. When the game starts, we of course want the game to start in its past mode so that the player can place a couple of towers with the initial cash that we give him. Then when the player hits play, a button we do not have yet, we want to start the next wave. Start next wave needs to be called both when the player starts the level, but also after it has killed one wave. So this wave function or start next wave function needs to be called on two different occasions. The first time when we hit play. Well, we don't have that function yet, but we can imitate it. So for now, we're going to be copy pasting this function and we'll add it under our ready function. So instead of having a play button, we'll add that probably in the next tutorial. We're going to mimic that the player press play as we start this game up. The first thing we want to do is we want to retrieve the wave data. Not every wave is going to be the same because the player is going to be building more and more towers. So we need to spawn more and more and stronger and stronger enemies to make sure that the player stays challenged in this particular level. We retrieve the wave data. That is a function by itself. You see that right here. And for now, I have hard coded the wave data as two blue tanks. You can see that this wave data is it's one big array with nested arrays inside of it. So this is tank number one and this is tank number two. Both are blue tanks and this is the amount of time between the two different spawns or between spawns. That way the two tanks are not on top of each other and that way you also have the flexibility as a game designer to create certain difficulties for the player. If the tanks are further apart, that means that the turrets have more time to kill each tank. If maybe the level progresses, you want these tanks to spawn closer to each other so that the player is more challenged. So this is going to give you that flexibility. Then we're going to increase the wave counter with one because as the game goes, we need to track which wave the player is currently at so that we know which wave is going to be next or if this was the last wave and the player won the game or in this case, this particular level. Now, current wave is something we don't have yet. So we're going to go to the top of the script. We're going to say var current wave. And of course, when the game starts, the current wave is zero. Then we're going to add plus one to the wave. And that way we can cycle through the waves as we go. We can also keep track of how many enemies are left in the current wave. So we're going to start, of course, with a zero. And we can take the size of the array wave data. Wave data has two indexes. So that means that we're going to get two enemies in this wave. Every single time that we kill an enemy, we can deduct one of that integer. And the moment that we hit zero, we know that the player has killed all the tanks. Now, we don't use that yet in this tutorial, but that's the way in a future tutorial, how we're going to keep track of when a wave has finished. And then we return that wave data to our start next wave function right there. Then we'll yield the code for 0.2 seconds. And the reason why we do that is because we want to have some padding between the waves. When you play a tower defense game, you'll see that the moment you kill the last enemy of a wave, the next wave doesn't start immediately. Usually there's a little bit of padding in between there. A second, two seconds for the player to catch their breath, maybe place a couple of towers or upgrade some towers, and then the game continues. I set this at 0.2 seconds, but you can set it at any time that you want to. And then once that um, code has yielded for 0.2 seconds, we spawn the enemies based on the wave data we have retrieved. And in our spawn enemies functions, you'll see that we're going to go over every index in wave data. So it means we're going to go over every sub array. For every sub array, we are going to first load the correct enemy scene. And we can get that with this variable part here. We get the first index of I. So in that case, that will retrieve blue tank. We're going to instance that scene. We're going to get the map node. We're going to get the path within our map that we added earlier in this tutorial. And we'll add the child new enemy and we'll give it a human readable name. So we get blue tank one, blue tank two, etc. Then we're going to yield the code for index number one of I. So that will be 0.7 seconds. And on the second tank, 
0.1 second, and that makes sure that these times uh, these tanks are going to be spawning a little bit apart from each other. Now with that done, we got the start next wave. We got these two variables on the top. We got these three functions. We hit play. We hit new game, and there you go. Here you got our two tanks spawning into the world 0.7 seconds apart. And as you can see, both their position as well as their rotation is following the path perfectly with our curves, making these tanks rock, walk, drive around this map perfectly. Now here you can see a small issue. I forgot one little element when we created the tank scene. Currently, our path follow to the is set to loop. And because of that, yeah, you would expect that the tanks are not gonna start again at the beginning. You simply want the tank reaching the end to, of course, deduct some life from the base of the player. So we can change this. We're gonna switch to the tank. We're actually already on the blue tank scene right there. We're gonna make sure this path follow to D is selected and we can simply select loop here to make sure that these tanks are not gonna be looping over the map over and over again. Now, if you want these tanks to go a little bit faster, very easy, you just take the speed, and for example, set that to 300. Now, when you play the game, hit new game, you'll see that your tanks now are a lot faster. So with that speed variable, you can make sure that one tank is a lot faster than the other. And as you can see right now, they don't loop anymore. So yeah, there you go. You got some tanks driving around on your map. That was it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, then smash that like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget that bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on the next video. In the next video, I think we'll start adding some user interface elements for the play, pause, and speed up button so that the player is actually able to start a wave when they want to, pause the game when they want to, and speed up the game if they feel confident that their turrets can handle the heat. I hope to see you in that tutorial, and until then, as always, Keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later, guys.